In the last part, we created our first model and connected user list to the store. Today we're going to explore how we can work with side effects in Rematch and load users from an actual API. As we know, Redux is built around the idea of pure functions, and one of the requirements for pure functions is that they must not have any side effects, meaning that they don't rely on any external resources. But in real-world applications, we have to deal with various side effects. We need to call APIs, write and read stuff from local storage, interface with WebSockets, and all of these operations are impure. A common solution to this problem is to use Redux Thunks library, which basically allows to execute side effects logic before calling pure reducer functions. In Rematch, we have a built-in support for side effects, so we don't need to add or configure any additional middleware. We can use side effects in our models by adding effects property with the following signature. It should be a function that takes one argument called dispatch and it should return an object where each property represents a single effect, much like our reducers object up here. Dispatch argument here is the same dispatch that we get inside map dispatch functions, but unfortunately we cannot use our root dispatch type here. The problem is that root dispatch type requires all models to be defined before it can infer the shape of our models. So we cannot use this type here while we're still defining it, because it will create a circular reference. So instead, we need to use a more generic rematch dispatch type here, which means that we won't get full type safety inside our models. So let's create a new effect for loading our users from the API. First, we go into import load users methods from common API, and then we're going to call it const users equal load users. And load users function returns a promise. So we want to mark our effect as a sync and then await the result of function execution. Now that we have a list of users, we can pass it to our loaded reducer function. We can do that by first accessing users model on our dispatch object and then calling loaded reducer, passing it an array of users. And as we mentioned before, we don't get type safe checks here. So we need to be careful not to make a typo. Now we can open users component and instead of mapping loaded reducer from users model, we can use our load effect. And I'm going to rename it here and make sure that we call in it inside our components. And this time we don't need to pass any arguments since our effect doesn't require any. Now, if we save changes and switch to the browser, we can already see that we have a much larger list of users. And if we check the network tab, we can see that this time users are being loaded from an actual API. And that is it for today. In the next part, we're going to add a second model for toast notifications, and we'll see how we can interact between the models.